Hello, my name is Jasmine Booth, and today I'm presenting culturally responsive teaching. Culture affects the way we act or behave. So in the classroom, there are cultural influences in how we learn and interpret information. On a broader scale, cultural influences in learning determine how we learn, and these are based off of the world in which we were raised. Some cultures may have a strong emphasis in physical learning, learning in nature, and some may have more specific needs that need to be met in order to learn effectively. For instance, Iris Center mentioned several specific examples, which include respect for authority figures, relationships with community, interpersonal space, eye contact, verbal interactions, providing directions, student engagement, and family engagement as several factors that are culture influences. Cultural competence is being able to teach other cultures to the best of one's abilities by meeting the student's physical, emotional, and social needs and utilize the student's cultural background when developing lessons to promote learning in students from varying cultures. It plays a critical role in the instruction of ELLs. By gaining insight into their culture, we can accurately assist their learning journey and collaborate with them in a meaningful way. English language learners' cultural values and beliefs can be integrated appropriately in the classroom by including things that fit into their culture into examples. Discussions of culture when relevant should be exemplified and relating other unique perspectives by explicitly stating these and allowing students to share about their unique perspectives as well. For instance, in English class, teachers should use articles and lessons from varying cultures, including those that their teachers or sorry students originated from, and allow the students to share their perspectives. The role of culture when teaching is to highlight our unique differences and bring light all the pieces of us that guide our processes and way of life. These connections to ourselves and others bridge the engagement gap by closing in on the world around us and helping students feel connected to their learning. School and classroom environment must be inclusive and exemplify student differences and culture to engage students and get them excited about their learning. It also helps them feel more comfortable in the classroom by helping them feel connected through their own unique experiences. For instance, if a student is learning how to write in full sentences, then the teacher can help guide the student by connecting them back to familiar territory. They can do this by asking them questions about their culture. How would they write it in their language? What is different? What is the same? Some steps that are necessary to create an inclusive environment is to express the innate differences between all students and how these differences make us who we are. A crucial step is to ensure all students know that their perspectives are worth hearing and that no culture is bad or wrong. By outright speaking the tr this truth, it can help the classroom environment become a safe place for all. Next, the teacher should provide learning opportunities where these differences further their understanding. Lastly, they should allow the students to open up and create a more inclusive environment with each other. Some strategies for supporting and celebrating cultural diversity within instruction are to pull from educational resources about different cultures. Stories, articles, and media pieces can have diverse cultures included in them while still meeting their educational needs. Another strategy involve, involves connecting their con content to the students by asking them questions. Lastly, I would identify unique ways that different cultures function and follow it as a guide for certain academic activities. If a student's culture teaches their children through experience, then I may use a lesson plan that involves problem solving and student-based teaching rather than direct instruction. Lastly, I would reach out to parents and family members to discuss with them how I can more adequately address different cultural needs and views into the classroom. Supporting the needs of L's in the classroom. Some strategies for responsiveness to the different strengths, needs, and identities of L's would be di to differentiate content into categories based on similar levels or scoring on an ELP assessment or IEPs. For example, if some students are still developing their grade level vocabulary, then I would provide them with flashcards of the terms that they can refer back to. For my special needs else, I would use the IEP as a guide to assess where their needs are and it differentiate the processes or environment to better accommodate them. This way they can receive equitable education through receiving the same source material but in more palatable ways. To meet the student's social and emotional needs, I may adjust seating, adjust content, for more social interaction in groups and incorporate my students' culture and interests to further connect them with the rest of the class. To connect the students emotionally, I would allow them to share their feelings and opinions or stories of their own with me and their peers. The importance in understanding the variety of 
social, emotional, and cultural needs of students when establishing classroom routines and procedures is that every student is raised differently and may need direct communication of these rules because they may not have the same ones at home. They may also require for me to tweak how I communicate these rules and demonstrate them in the classroom to fit my students' needs. I will also be sure that I am allowing students to be social with each other in the context of instruction. Emotionally, I would ensure that the consequences for breaking classroom rules or not following procedures is done in an ethical way. That means I will handle the consequences in a calm, orderly manner that will cause an effective change without bringing down the student or multiple students. Last but not least, I would ensure that my standards are be meeting the cultural needs of my students and work with the students rather than completely diminish what they are accustomed to. For instance, in some cultures, students feel safe with their belongings near them. For that student, I would allow them to hold on to their belongings in a safe place under their seat. That way I'm accommodating them, but I'm still holding true to my rules. Family and community practices can influence language learning in several ways. First of all, students learn best when they feel comfortable and connecting with their family members can help facilitate this. Family members are a great resource for connecting with elves because they may feel like outsiders in the learning process. Connecting with the community too, too is a great way to facilitate growth as well because they lessen the feelings of discrimination or bias that prevent um, students from learning, and they connect with students who are also like them. Making sure that students are connecting with all their different funds of knowledge will help them in their language learning journey by reminding them that they are not alone and that learning English does not take away from their home culture. It only adds to it. Strategies that build and foster strong family connections are to reach out to these family members in ways that are convenient to them whether that be through text, video streaming services, or using online tr translating services, all of these methods can be used so that the parents feel like they are heard and can communicate with their teachers for the success of their children. To connect to the community, teachers should reach out through social media and other community groups, whether that be online or in person, to connect others to the community as well. They can discuss it in class, post flyers around their classrooms, and share it to the parents using online resources. To foster students' growth, schools must partner with parents so that students can feel heard and understood regardless of the language barrier. Some effects that family engagement practices, some, sorry, some strategies for family engagement in, includes bringing them into homework. This can be done by translating the instructions and including them in the discussions on assignments, specifically those relating to culture. By making these connections to the parents in educational matters, the parents can feel that they are a part of their children's education and can effectively receive help at any time from their teachers. Some inclusive community engagement practices include using the library as a way to con connect to families of all backgrounds. This can be by talking with, with people in, at the library and facilitating growth with meaningful discussions on what teachers and parents can do to support else. Thank you.